Hello and welcome to KY Home Garage. In this video I'm going to talk about pressure pulse sensor. If you want to use this sensor for your automotive troubleshooting uh, you will have to pay probably a couple hundred dollars for the sensor and this is one of the uh, first sensors that was made one of the originals and they are around two hundred dollars. Um, I can show you how to make this sensor for almost less than ten dollars and uh, at the end of this video I'm going to uh, compare both of these sensors uh, on the oscilloscope from the same uh, source we're going to use an intake, uh, intake manifold uh, so I can show you how if there are any differences in, uh, in, uh, in the signals that these two sensors are going to make so anyway what you're going to need a uh, piezo sensor this is a sensor that you can get on eBay for, um, you can probably get 10 of those for 2 or 3 dollars. Uh, this sensor, it, 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 it makes its own voltage, AC voltage, so you don't, you don't have to have any power supply. Uh, when the pulsation is applied to this sensor, it's going to make a sine wave on your, on your oscilloscope. And you're, not going, you're not going to be able to see that. So, all you're going to need for this project is uh, two turkey basters, and that's what I use. You can use whatever you want uh, as long as, it, as it's going to be functional for you. So um, uh, I, uh, this time I just have one, but you're going to have an idea how I made this. So I just cut one end of it, you know, turkey basters. Uh, then I put a little tube in here, like this, and I use a hot glue gun, and I fill this area with, uh, with the glue. And the reason I did that, the first time I made it, uh, you want your sensor to be at the bottom of this tube. Well, the problem was when I applied the vacuum on it, it flipped the sensor to the side and it was no longer functional. So you want something solid for this sensor to rest on. So the best thing what I found that worked for me is just to put a little tubing and uh, fill it up with, uh, with a hot glue gun so this sensor has something to rest on. Um, and all that other thing you have to do, uh, you're going to solder your um, cables to these two wires, the black and red. Uh, basically, this is the positive, this is the negative. And uh, you're going to take another turkey baster, uh, cut another end off of it, and just glue it back together. And that's, that's all you got to do. Uh, what I would recommend also is to drill a little hole, uh, because you can use this sensor in the exhaust. Uh, to look for a sine wave, to look for a cellular contribution. If you do a cellular contribution test, well, it's going to suck some of the moistures from, uh, uh, from the exhaust, so you're going to have a condensation behind of it. So you don't want that to hang inside of this tubing, so inside of this tube. So just do a little hole and it will, it will, it will uh, make its way out. So um, I think I, I, uh, I hope this explains the way I made this, and uh, now I'm going to use. Um, I'm going to use these two sensors, I'm going to hook them up to the same source and uh, then we're going to, then we're going to um, compare the two readings. Uh, just one more time, make sure that this end of the sensor, um, this, this little hole here, it will supposed to face your source that you're going to measure, your vacuum or pressure from the exhaust or, or vacuum from, uh, from the intake manifold. So um, let's see what this looks like. Okay, we're back. Um, now I have uh, my homemade uh, and uh, homemade sensor and uh, original sensor hooked up to the same vacuum source. It's an intake manifold from uh, 2006 uh, Chrysler Sebring 2.7 engine. Now I'm going to follow down to the oscilloscope. Yellow channel is going to be original scope. The green channel is going to be homemade scope. When you set your you make your settings on your oscilloscope uh, on the channels I, you, you're going to enable your channel whichever you want you want to look you're going to also enable your AC coupling because it's going to make AC uh, voltage um, then on on your test lead just use, use regular leads on the voltage on the channel 1 I pick two, 1 volt and on uh, channel 2 I did two volts because it's a little bit difference in uh, in the voltage between these two sensors. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna start the car and you will see how these signals look and if this is something you might use in your troubleshooting.
Now as you can see, yellow signal it's a little bit nicer than a green one. Green one is a little choppier. But even with the green one you can you can see pretty good details if you have any problems with the intake or exhaust manifolds. Basically what you look is repetition. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, and six cylinders, and you can see they're all nice and nice and even, no discrepancy there. So this engine does not have any uh, problems with um, with the valves. So um, that's about it this time. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I, I hope you find it informative. Uh, I will leave a description link in my in my um, in my video how to find this sensor on eBay. And um, thanks for watching. And um, Hope you like it.